step one after removing the tire is removing this shield and it has two um, five millimeter hex keys right there. So the back brakes are different from the front brakes and you have to take off these two extra bolts right here right here there's one and right here there's the other they go through the the springy part um, and after that it'll be resting on the hose for the brake fluid I think there might be a different way I'm supposed to do it with pulling off a different part of the assembly but my my ratchet couldn't knock that loose these I can knock loose and I've done it this way before so there's one of them and those are the screws that go into the sliding portion of it you can hear a little pop when you pull it out and probably needs a little grease on them. all right and so then this part just kind of comes off and there's the, the piston for the brake, which we'll have to push back in. And in order to get that loose, you actually have to, I left this part out. Um, in order to get that loose, you have to loosen up your drainage screw and, and push on it to get, to get it to squirt some, some brake fluid out and relieve some of the pressure. One of the ways you can do that as you you loosen that and then you can get a tool in there and just pry and get this to push against its sliding motion and you, by pulling it forward you'll push that piston back up and it'll squirt oil out or brake fluid out and it'll get it loose enough to where you can you can uh, unscrew it from your brakes so this is our brake pad. That's the brake shoe. Looks a little gummed up. It's the other brake shoe. Get a screwdriver. This brake here should have been changed before it got to this point. <clears throat> you can see there's brake pad still there, but right there it's starting to grind into the metal. Right there, and that's probably why you have this different texture back here on the rotor. So that one waited too long. And let that thing go in there. Hmm. Looks like the other one's missing. Brake shoe. Mm. This one's pretty thin as well. Let's get my screwdriver in there to pry the brake shoe loose, the brake pad loose. That one. Oh, well, we didn't go all the way through the brake pad on that, so yay for us. We don't suck completely. All right.
You can go ahead and stop it for a moment. All right, here's our new brake pads for the back. So that's a pair, and it comes a pair. Looks like the shoes come pre-installed. in here so see quite a, quite a difference there and breakiness I don't think this old rusted thing needs to go back on there but maybe it does because like that one had one too I have to cut that part of the uh, the video. Dust, we're not supposed to breathe. It's bad for you. Should have a dust mask on. You want to go run and get some? Yeah, maybe we'll get a dust mask. Good too. Stop this. Yeah, go ahead and stop it. You recording? Yeah. Right, so we got to get that piston all the way in. Just loosen this part so it can shoot out fluid. And then we just got to push it in one way or another. Probably shouldn't get the brake fluid all over the brakes. <clears throat> Just gotta get that pissed in all over again. Without getting brake fluid everywhere, without damaging anything. close yet. <clears throat> Make a new set of brake pads. You gotta get that piston all the way flush essentially. <sighs> I'm going to squeeze the, the whole piston assembly so it squirts out. And then, while it's squirting, you tighten it. That's kind of a tricky thing to do, especially when your hands are all slippery. I help keep the air bubbles out of it, though. Now, I'm going to guess that these shoes here you don't need anymore. All right. Now let's get these guys back in. So there's a rubber grommet. This guy got pushed out of the way a bit. Wasn't very careful with it. Should have been more careful. But it looks like it's not damaged. Gotta get it back in position there. Gotta get the bottom one back in position. Get this there to kind of hold that guy, keep him from slipping out again while I get the bottom one. You'll see it's nice and accordion style there. Mm. Come on, you 
stupid thing. There we go. All right. And we got the bottom one in, got the top one in. Now what I want to do is uh, I'm not going to tighten them up yet because it seems like they need some more, a little bit of grease on them. I'm going to go get the grease gun and put a tiny bit on each of these screws and then, and then screw them in tight. Yeah, go ahead. On this one, I have to I accidentally popped the this thing all the way out and realized that it's it's like got rust on it but only on the inside. So I cleaned it off a grunt a bunch. Some brushes and stuff. I'm pretty sure that's a bad sign, but I'm not positive. And I didn't leave. I don't want to leave hardly any WD 40 on there because I don't know if that's bad for mixing with brake fluid. In there. I had to knock this loose with the ratcheting guy too. So then we've got a here's a light back in here. Can you come further over? I just need light right now. Let's see. Yeah, like that. Okay. Do is you can back up a bit. Mm. Yeah. Loosen that up so it can leak, and then we're gonna pry and see how the fluid's coming out. We're just pushing the piston back into itself and while we're still pushing. Freedom there. Yeah. The piston isn't pushing on it anymore. And so now we've got to pull those and these guys off again. So let's see. Tiny, tiny. So this time I can bang downwards, I think, right? That was a lot better than the last one. Oh. Nice. All right. Oh, I got a brush mask. Let's see, there it is. So, a lot of brake pads. I think they still have asbestos in them. I'm not positive, but pretty sure. Anyways, you probably don't want to breathe that dust anyways, no matter what it is. <coughs> oh, here, let me pick your knees up for a second. First to catch. Catch this, these bolts if they drop out. And then we just going to pull the calipers off again. Loose. 
how's this? Take those guys out. Is that still running? there gotta watch out for Don't put any pressure on that put some caliper grease on these guys Send light over here. I'm gonna put some What's that on the side of there? The soft part or the hard part? The white, white thing in the middle. That's a spider web. Oh, that's a really thick spider. Yeah. I wonder how the spider got in there. It must have got in when we were changing the pads and then got stuck. Because yeah. I don't I don't think there's any air exposed. Maybe maybe a tiny, tiny little bit exposed. Maybe it got in there as a baby. I don't know. Pretty crappy place to get stuck though. Mm -hmm. Spend the rest of your life inside of a brake piston, brake caliper piston. Nothing to eat, nothing yeah. to look good. Yeah, yeah. Alright, now I need to pull these brake pads out. So I'll get that screwdriver again. Well, these ones aren't too bad actually. But uh, I want to kind of do it all at the same time. So I you know, keep track. And look at that. Oh, that's quite a bit left. Yeah. Well, those are something changed. Maybe we changed one side and didn't change the other. Well, I think we should change them now just to have them you know, on the same cycle. These are only about half gone. Not even, so yeah, half gone. We'll go ahead and change them now. I must have uh, started changing my brakes and then you know, got to one side and then gotten busy and forgotten that I had to do the other side still. Let's look at how much of that is left. Uh, it's good to do it now, then it's out of the way. You know. Yeah. That must have been why they said that we had plenty left. They probably looked at one side and assumed that they both were about the same, which I think if they were changed at the same time would be a good assumption. Oh, I think I left the flashlight. Is the flashlight? I think it's jammed up inside the other side. Yeah, I can see the light.
Mm. This backside doesn't have the this lip here. So I think it just slides pretty much straight down. The front side you gotta get the front part of it in the lip first. And then the back side. Oh, that was quick. Yeah. Caliper might need a little more squeezing. Let's see. Let's see if it fits. Oh, got it. Good. Yay. Oh, yeah. No, the rubber stuff here. Um, I forgot. I could have pushed the. Yeah, I forgot. See these rubber things? That was kind of rough on them. Okay, the light back here. Get the rubber guy back to where he wants to be. Now let's look at the bottom one. There we go. Okay. On these kind, if you're not pushing in, they can you can think that you're that you're screwing it in and it's just sitting there and spinning because it has a long part on it that doesn't have any threading on it, so it'll rest and not actually screw in. So if you put a little pressure on the top, it'll save you some time just because you'll be spinning it for a while before you realize it's not screwing in anywhere. I'm gonna be like, man, this is taking forever, so stupid. Tightness, there's probably some special setting for how tight it's supposed to be. I don't know what that is. 
I just a couple taps. Don't want to tap it too many times or it'll strip out the threads. I'll just get it you know, good and hand tightened. Make sure you can't hand tighten it anymore. And give it a couple pops. And that'll probably hold it. It's more than what your tires get usually, so. And then, let's see, gotta put this plate back on. It's at 10% battery. Okay, we're, we're almost done. Keep going. Put the plate on. These are five millimeter hex bolts. Oh, wait, this one. I can't put her on yet. I gotta find the, find the lock washer for it. Lock washer's down here somewhere. Here it is. Oh, that's the cap for the, I don't know where that was. What we'll get is a uh, portable battery. What's the battery at now? Um, it doesn't sound. So. Oh, it just gave you a warning? Yeah, it just gave me a warning. All right. Next, um, gonna have you stomp on the brake. Well, put all your weight on the brake, and I'm gonna let this out open and then close it while your foot's still on the brake. So go ahead and stop that. Okay. 